Hey friends, welcome back to a new episode of the Life of a Makeup Artist. I am your host, Jaleesa Jaikaran, and today we have something a bit new, okay? I don't know if we want to call it Ask Jaleesa, if we just want to let it rock, but I get a lot of questions on my social media via Instagram and TikTok asking for career advice and little questions that kind of pop in ever so often. And you know, I don't want it to get lost in the sauce because I post quite a lot. I figured it would make the most sense to bring it on to the life of a makeup artist. So we do have a question from Sarah and Sarah asks, what's your advice for someone wanting to be in the commercial side of the industry? I do bridal now and I want to transition out into editorial. So this is quite a task, but I'm telling you it is a thousand percent possible. So I have three tips for you. So the first thing that you want to do, because you do bridal, you probably have um, a lot of pictures of brides, right? You have your brides, you have trials. I'm sure there's other makeup that you do, clients and client glam and things like that. But you want to start setting up test shoots because you want to be desirable to that future client, right? So when that client sees your work, they're not going to be like, well, this is a bridal makeup artist. They're going to see the type of work that you want to do. So I always say, don't ever wait for somebody to hire you. Like I have literally paid I've, I think I've only done this like one time, but I have no qualms um, against this. I do think that if you need to pay a photographer to get the type of work that you need to do, absolutely do it because it is a thousand percent worth it. Of course, if it's like a collaborative effort, the photographer, hair, makeup, nails, everybody's coming together. That's what you call test shoots. Back in the day, it used to be called TFP, but I definitely feel like you should literally create like a spreadsheet, like go all in. This is what I did when I first moved to New York. Go all in, find a bunch of photographers that you would like to work with, find a bunch of hairstylists you would like to work with, and just try and start building a community where you're like, hey, I actually really want to start building my book up. Would you be interested in collaborating with me? Because this is, you know, what I want to do. These are my goals. So really start introducing yourself vertically because, you know, sometimes we'll see photographers that are already shooting these big campaigns and these big things and not to say those photographers are not testing but you want to start networking with your peers right you want to start creating those images um and then you kind of start to get more inspired like oh you know I want to do editorial but maybe I want to do this type of makeup or maybe I want to do that type of makeup so when you're in bridal obviously you're not getting creative like you would on an editorial so creating on set on your own terms on your own time is going to give you that freedom to to experiment to try new products to be like you know what I want to paint this model's face blue you know what I mean and that is going to actually give you more confidence when you go into an editorial and they're like oh we want something you know very creative today you're like all right boom I got it I know what I can do instead of just like oh well damn I'm just getting into this and I don't really I don't really know what I want to do because I usually do natural glam you know what I mean so you kind of just give yourself time and space to exercise that creative muscle that you have and not just be stuck in a box that's the first one. The second one is, all of this is honestly research, but the second one is to really start reaching out to production companies. So sometimes brands hire directly if they're a small brand. Most brands sometimes hire production companies. So whatever area you're in, you know, um, if you're, I don't know where, what country you live in or what uh, state you live in, but you want to start looking up your local production companies, local producers, and the people that are actually hiring out. So what happens is that a brand brand will reach out to the production company be like hey this is what we're doing you handle it and essentially if you are you know connected to the to the company or you know someone there or you just been introduced like they might consider you for that job especially if you introduce yourself you show your work you follow up and that's one thing to remember too don't get discouraged if you don't hear back on the first time the second time the third time you want to be persistent so start looking into production companies start sending out your work introducing yourself because that is so so important and the last and most important one that I, in my opinion, not everybody has done this and they have successful careers, but I do think it is very, very helpful for your growth and just being in those rooms. Assisting is, to me, the 
top of the totem pole when it comes to getting your foot into any industry. If I want to be in fashion, I'm going to assist fashion makeup artists. That's how I, I've gotten into backstage. I have gotten into so many editorials that I've done, glamour, essence, in style. That's how I've gotten that experience because I assisted other people on those types of shoots. You know, when you are doing bridal, when you're doing fashion, when you're doing commercial, like set etiquette and all those different things is sometimes, yeah, you could read it in a book, but the way that those shoots run, you kind of have to be part of it to understand understand how like how it goes so start looking at agencies start looking at you know people that you might know like maybe you have a friend that already does it like hey when you're you know if you ever need extra hands i'm available like and just let them know that you're available and you're interested and you're happy to work that's how i found a lot of my assistants like people was like hey i'm happy to work even if it's not paid like i'll come on and help you on a test shoot and that is a really good way to you know introduce yourself to a new artist because you're not really saying well i don't want to assist i don't care if, it, if i'm not getting paid because essentially there's a point in time in your career where you're not going to be paid for all the things that you do so you're going to put yourself in a situation where it's like okay i'm going to make myself such an asset to this person eventually i know the money is going to come and that's how i've actually like met one of my most recent assistants she introduced herself to me via email she said hey i'm in i would love to assist you even if it's like things that you know whatever like it's not paid if it's a test shoot whatever i'll come and that's what i was like i was going to a test shoot last minute i was like oh my god i actually think i need an assistant because it's a very creative shoot and i was like I, you know I, most of the time i kind of like pull i i do stuff on my own all the time and i don't really think about having an assistant all the time especially if it's a personal project but she was great and now she has assisted me on a bunch of different stuff um beauty campaigns we did something with adidas the other day so that's a good way to kind of get your your foot into the door and i remember it's so valuable because when it is not your job the pressure is really not on you like you have to perform and you have to help this artist but at the end of the day you're just kind of like a fly on the wall you know and that's how it was for me when i first started assisting like all of this drama is happening all these things happening but this is not my job but i'm there and i am being exposed to this you know this caliber of job and i can see like okay this is how they are this is how the set etiquette is this is how i should communicate with the photographer or the art director or whoever else and these are the people that i should be you know introducing myself to so i do think that there's so much more to be said but i hope that that was helpful because because, you know, I don't think it's impossible from moving from bridal into editorial, but just know, you know, why you want to do it and find, and remember to be gentle with yourself. Like things don't happen overnight. You're definitely going to be able to make it happen, but you want to just like chip at it, right? You know, just like one chip a day and you're going to be able to like break that, like that, whatever, that mold that you're trying to like break because... I think it's so valuable to do more than one thing. Like in the in the meantime, when you're building your portfolio and reaching out and assisting, take your bridal clients, make your money, make your day rate, do what you have to do. You know what I mean? And still, you know, slowly transition. And, you know, you might not even transition out fully. You might just continue to do your brides and live the best of both lives but let me know if that was helpful and if you have any questions for me you can leave it in my dms at the life of a makeup artist on tiktok at the life of a makeup artist or here on youtube at jaleesa jaikaran i'll catch you guys in the next one